Hi, this video is about the development and TIF plan for Delta Township. Delta Township has been in the process of creating a corridor improvement authority uh, that really envisions what's going to happen to the Saginaw Highway corridor from Broadbend to Waverly. The entire corridor has had a lot of investment over the years. Some of it was a long time ago, for example, down by the Lansing Mall, and parts of the corridor on the east end in particular are aging. As we try to think about the different tools that we have available uh, and, and different things that the community has said, we're looking towards the future. And a master plan is a guide for that. And so the community's master plan from 2013 talked about creating a more walkable neighborhood, thinking about how to amend township regulations for info commercial development, filling vacant storefronts, providing complete streets, and really improving the appearance of the Saginaw Highway corridor. Uh, and for objectives for commercial development, thinking about the declining commercial properties and how do we recruit and retain new businesses along there, think about new infill development and redevelopment, and particularly around the Lansing Mall, think of new ways, for example, a town center concept to get additional investment. Uh, the quarter improvement authority process, uh, as defined by state law, requires a number of steps. Uh, and so the township board in February created the corridor improvement authority uh, district, kind of the location of where the corridor improvement authority would be located, started to create the bylaws for the authority board itself, identified and appointed authority board members. And since then, we've been in the process of creating the development and TIF plan, which really operates, um, provides information on how the authority board will operate and where the revenue will come from to do projects. We have a public hearing coming up on November 15th so that the public can share their ideas about this project. And then there'll be development agreements that come later on, both uh, with taxing jurisdictions as well as uh, a developer or two. So I wanted to give you a brief overview of the Corridor Improvement Authority and what it does. Uh, the powers of the authority board uh, include creating an economic analysis, developing long range plans, looking at market research and public relations uh, campaigns to try to really tune into what the corridor needs and to develop strategies for attracting those businesses. Looking at public facilities and existing land and how that can be better used. And then also requirements, uh, they, can, they can use resources to be able to think about ADA accessibility, public facilities such as sidewalks and bike trails, really uh, looking comprehensively at the corridor and what it really needs to be able to spur new activity. The development plan is part of that strategy and it looks at the public facilities and private land uses, both existing and proposed that are along the corridor and anticipated changes that might happen there. Uh, we think about the kind of zone changes we might need to have. So for example, if residential isn't allowed, allowing residential. There are some provisions already in their code for Delta Township that do allow that. Uh, but really kind of looking at that development area and what we want to see happen in here. As I mentioned, it goes from Waverly to Broadbend. Uh, and all the properties that you see in Peach are those locations uh, where we have that in the development area. So when we talk about public facilities and what improvements we can see and what kind of funding could go into those areas, this is the geography that we're talking about. Uh, an important definition in particular is the very last one that you see on this page. The definition of public facility. So the way that the Corridor Improvement Authority's development plan is written is that only monies can be used on public facilities. So, so there's some, men, some information about it's helping a private developer or it's going towards stores. In this case, the way that the authority plan has been written is that it can only be spent on streets, plazas, pedestrian malls, furniture, beautification, lighting, parking, um, you know, retention ponds, utilities, transit facilities that are continuously open to the public. So a public street can be created uh, in an undeveloped area and that could be eligible for reimbursement. But the developer has to front the money first. The projects list includes hard and soft costs. So hard costs are actually, for example, the construction of a street and the soft costs would be the engineering of that street to be able to have it go in. As we talked about plans and studies can be also funded through a corridor improvement authority funds. 
The TIF plan is another component. So there's two pieces. The development plan talks about the types of projects that we want and identifying those. And the TIF plan talks about how we're going to pay for them. There's a number of variables that get taken into consideration, uh, such as interest, contingency, pass-through, administrative costs, the duration, and the projects list. Uh, a lot of that detail is in that plan and really describes how we came up with the methodology for the, the TIF capture. The TIF plan itself just talks about the revenues and costs. It's basically a balance sheet for how we're going to pay things, pay for things and how we're going to collect them and then how they're going to be spent. How a TIF plan works is really you have the base value that is set. So when we start this uh, plan, once the plan is adopted, it's frozen in time. So taxing jurisdictions will continually collect the base tax value as of this year. That does not change. Um, what happens is then we capture the increment that's located here over a period of time, and that increment helps to pay for those public facilities and plans and projects that the authority board thinks are important to revitalize the corridor. After 20 years, which is proposed in the plan, the entire taxing value goes back to all of the taxing jurisdictions. So in addition to the base, they also then will get returned the entire taxing value. The way that we're collecting taxing revenues is only from two locations. The rest of the area within the development area will be still collected as it is today. No other changes to the taxing jurisdictions will be affected. So the only two areas where taxes would be collected for the authority board's activities are at Delta Crossings, the area in green, and the Eye property, also known as Brookside Crossings in that peach color or the purpley color. Um, those are the only two sites. So as those areas grow and develop, that tax, those taxes would be captured and then be able to be spent on the rest of the corridor. So for example, if MDOT wanted to come and do a boulevard, we could contribute towards the boulevard. Within the development and TIF plan, you'll see a lot of tables. So this is the initial table that talks about how the monies from Delta crossings and Brookside crossings would be collected and how those values then start to be based on. So this is the current base value of those two sites. The impact to the taxing jurisdictions uh, is, is interesting because we looked through a number of other communities and what the duration of their plans were and how much pass through, which is the amount of additional gain that's provided to those local jurisdictions above the base value. What we found is that it ranged every in uh, tenure from 15 to 40 years. Uh, in this particular case, we're only proposing 20 years, which is uh, a lot less than most that are 30 to 40 years. And then the pass through is zero, the most is 10%. Um, and in this process, we're proposing a 20% pass through to local jurisdictions. Within the plan, you'll see a number of tables. We won't go into them because it's difficult to read on a PowerPoint screen. But if you come to an open house or you look up the plan on the, on the township website, you'll be able to examine these more closely. But just to familiarize yourself with these tables, uh, what you'll see is that we calculate both Delta crossings and Brookside crossings and the revenue that's expected to be considered um, and how much taxes they would pay over a period of time. We then look at those taxes and the 20% pass through and how that would benefit the other jurisdictions, which include Lansing Community College, Eaton County, and the Library Board. Uh, you'll note that public schools are not affected whatsoever. There's no pass through that happens to the local tax or to the local education system because no taxes are pulled out from that. They continue to remain whole. Uh, and then we looked at how much is provided to both Eaton County, Lansing Community College, and the library. And so that information is contained in the report as well in Table 7. Uh, table 8 just provides you a little bit of additional, saying this is these are the taxes that would be collected from these different entities. Uh, again, the school system is maintained whole. Um, and we're really looking at these top three of Delta, Eaton, the library, and then the community college. 
Uh, it's important to note when we talk about development in the development area and the development plan, all these things having to do with development, that that's the public side. The development and TIF plan defines uh, those boundaries and the monies that will be collected and how they hope to be spent in accordance with the authority board's purview. But then also when there's an agreement made with the developer about how those monies will be spent for public facilities on their site, so in this case, Delta crossings or Brookside crossings, there's a separate agreement that's negotiated with the township board after the development and TIF plan have been adopted. So we may we have identified in the plan how those projects might translate into a development agreement, but it's not a guarantee. It really comes down to the township board deciding what you know how they want to negotiate that and what strings might be attached in the best interest of the public. So for the next steps, uh, we're looking forward to having the public hearing on November 15th. The Township Board then would review and approve uh, the development and TIF plan on December 6th. And then those development and reimbursement agreements would be executed in January and February, uh, both with the taxing jurisdictions, so they would have the 20% pass through, as well as the developer of Delta Crossings for uh, the new street that's being constructed, the new north-south street that's being constructed, uh, which includes the engineering plans, lighting, utilities, and all that, uh, to be able to facilitate the development of that area. It's important to note that all the taxes that have been estimated for the project only happen if the entire site is fully developed. Uh, if the infrastructure isn't built and it is not fully developed, then those numbers won't be realized. And with that, we thank you for your time and hope you found this to be educational.